What's up guys, Gary with self.dev. Today we are gonna go over how to get data from an API using Fetch. So let's do it. We're gonna be using the random user generator API. This basically gives you an image, a name, uh, email, birthday, address, phone number, password, a bunch of stuff for random users. If you ever need to make like a mock-up of a social media website or something like that, this is a great API to use for that. But if we refresh, we get a new person every time, new name, and that's what we're gonna be getting. So if we look in the documentation here, they have how to make a request with Ajax using jQuery. We don't wanna use jQuery, we want to use the Fetch web API. So we're, all we're gonna get is this URL here, the HTTPS random user dot me slash API. And if we send a Fetch request to this URL, it will send back data like this. Also, if you're here, I'm assuming you know what Fetch is. You know it's a tool to get data from APIs. You just need to know how to use it. So it's kind of what I'm gearing this for. Uh, now we've got our HTML file and our JS file. Let's go ahead and set up an HTML boilerplate here. And we'll do HTML5. Um, so to do that, I just, I'm in Visual Studio Code. I just did HTML and then pressed enter on this and that will give you an HTML boilerplate. We'll have an H1 that says API fetch example. And then we also want to have a script tag with an SRC equal to our script and close that. And then just to make sure that that's connected successfully, we'll just say alert hi and save. And then if we go back here and go to our page and refresh, we get an alert that says hi. So we know our script is connected. We've got our H1 there. Now let's get rid of that. So we're going to one, make the general fetch request and get data back. Um, then we're also going to look at how we would accept user input to modify the fetch request. And I think that's it, just those two things. So we're gonna make a function called get random user data. And in here, we're just gonna have a fetch request and we're gonna give it the URL that we want to request the data from. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get the data. But we want to do stuff with that data. So we'll say, after we get the data back, with then we want to get the data. We want to do data.json to turn that into, or make sure that's JSON formatted data. And then after that, we'll say then dot, or then data. We want to console log the data to make sure that the data is coming back and then we have that data. And then we'll just call our get random user data function down at the bottom here. Now, if we go back to our page here and refresh, and then we inspect this, if we go to the console, you can see we're getting results back and we've got one random user. We've got their phone number, we've got date of birth, their age, email, gender, uh, it should have a URL to a picture here. If we go to that, we've got their picture. So we are successfully getting data. Um, if you're just here on how to use fetch, that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do, you just do fetch and then the URL that you want to get the data from. Of course, the URL does have to be uh, an API so it can handle that request. If you send a fetch request to, let's just do facebook.com and save. We go back here and inspect this. This is going to give us an error because Facebook isn't set up to send data back like we want it to. Facebook is, there's a difference between a site like that and then an API that's supposed to send data back. But if you ever come up or come across an API that's using, like this says it's using jQuery and you can use the Ajax function, we don't want to use that. All we need is that API's URL there. Now, let's say we want to adjust the query. We wanna get some user input and let the user adjust what comes back. So let's look at the documentation here. What can we customize? So we can request multiple users. So we could have an input where we let the user say, hey, I want this many people back, or we could let them specify a gender. Let's let them specify a gender. That sounds easier. So in here, we will have a 
Um, an input type equals radio. What all do we need for the input type again in our HTML? Let's see. And then we'll just grab this and stick this in here twice because we have two genders. But there are more than two genders. Don't ban me, on, from, don't ban me YouTube. There's more than two. I'm not, you know. There's just two in this particular example. The API only has two genders, so it's not my fault that I can only have two radio buttons. It's the API's fault. Um, no, there's only two genders. Uh, let's see, name is going to be, the name and the four attribute need to be matched up so we can only have one attribute checked at a time. Uh, so this will be gender, this will be gender, this will be gender, and this will be gender. And then the value is what we need to change. So for this one, we'll say male, and we will also make the ID male. We don't really need ID in this scenario. We're not gonna use that, but. And then this one will be female. And then they can't be both checked, but we'll have we'll have this checked by default, just so one's checked by default. And then we also need a button down here. And this will be request data or users. Now in here, first let's do document query selector on the button and then add an event listener and we're going to add the click event. And when that button is clicked on, we want to get the value of the radio button and then pass that to our get random user data function. So we will say document dot, nope. If I can spell this right, document dot query selector, and we want to select the, how do, how do you, the input type equals radio, nope, I need to Google this. How do we get the input that's checked? That's what I'm looking for. So we're saying get the input with the name equal to gender that has the value checked. And then this needs a closing, thing and we want to get the value and then we'll just store that here and we'll say const gender equals that and then we want to call get random user data with the gender the user has selected so we need to change this so this gets a gender and then here we're going to change this to a template literal. So we'll use the back ticks here. And then we'll say gender equals the gender the user has selected. Now this should console log the data we get back that is either male or female based on the user's input. Um, and then we don't need to call this in the bottom anymore. So we'll only call this when the user clicks the button. Now if we refresh this and inspect in our console, we don't have any data here. If we click request users though, we should get a mail back. So gender mail, let's do that again. Still mail, or actually let's do that two, three, four, five times. And then these all should be mail. All right, mail, 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 and mail. So that appears to be working. And then let's test female request users. And then we get Female, sweet. You have now learned how to make a general fetch request if you just want to get data back with no user input. Um, also, this is called a query param. Most APIs are going to have stuff like this that you can just stick in if you want to customize your query. Like if we didn't want the users to be able to decide that and we just wanted males, we'll just, we could just put male here and now it would only give us back males. Um, we can also look at our documentation for the API and there is a result equals 5,000. Now we don't want to get 5,000 back, but we can say, oh, we need that. We just need the and here. And then we're saying gender equals male and results is, let's just get like 10 back. 
So now if we go here and click request users and inspect this again, and here we have an array of 10, so we've got 10 people. And you can just add on as many other query params as the API allows and customize that to your heart's content. You can't make up values, so if the API doesn't have it, like if we want to search by people who, I don't know what else you would wanna search for, um, but you can't use values the API doesn't have, so that's kind of a given, but yeah, you know, just gotta specify that. But hope this helped you guys out. Um, if it did, give me a thumbs up. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will make more videos like this to help educate you guys as much as I can. Uh, if you have any questions or video suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you can come hop in Discord and talk tech with me or other developers or other aspiring developers, the link to the Discord is in the description as well. I do a monthly project, so like that's a free project that you can build. You get a mock-up of an XD file. Um, and then you can basically build that on your own. And at the end of the month, you can come watch a live stream where I build that for you guys. So you can see how I would do it. And you can kind of compare how you did it versus how I would do it. And you know, um, there's also a bunch of other projects on self-taught-dev.com that I've made over the past year. So there's a bunch, there's some free projects there as well. And if you want to get my resume template, the one I used when I was applying for a job before I had any technical experience. So this is before I had any other dev job. This is the resume I was sending out. The link for that is in the description as well. So make sure you check that out if you're interested in that. And I think that's about it. So I will catch you guys next time. Peace. Round one.